so many new pieces to this IU football team. To me, that's going to set the tone on how you get ready for games on, on Saturday uh, in the fall. I would put that Indiana Rue up against anybody else in the conference, and that's something that we typically don't even come close to saying. If you want to get total sickos committee about it, there's a position battle at Long Snapper too. This is the Hoosier Huddle Podcast, part of the College Huddle Podcast. Good morning and welcome to the Hoosier Huddle Podcast. I'm Sammy Jacobs. Along with me is TJ Inman, and we're here to break down the old brass platoon game. I'm shocked nobody talked about this in the press conference or asked Kirk Signetti what this little brass platoon uh, means, how it's added motivation. I'm sure he would have said it's just another game and we'll be ready to go. It's a big game because it's next game, uh, yeah. but it is – you know, one of the Big Ten's rivalry trophies in a conference with a lot of weird, odd, awesome trophies. Uh, So it's what makes this sport special. So we'll talk about that. But first, um, TJ, we've been doing this for almost 10 years. College game day was in town in Bloomington. Um, Spectacular. A lot of feelings went through my head. I'm sure a lot of feelings went through your head. We've, we've, been through awful seasons we've been through good seasons through coaching changes through people telling us you gotta cover basketball to last we're not doing that so stop asking um to to quote Saban um and all that stuff so take us through we'll talk about it for a little bit take us through what your mindset was for college game day on Saturday yeah you're right you know we've been at this for a decade um You've been at it for a little bit longer uh, before I joined on. Um, you know, I think we both certainly had times where we questioned, why the heck are we doing this? Um, and we heard it a lot from, you know, from people that care about the time that we put into it and, um, you know, the effort that we put into it and that, that wonder, what are you getting out of this? And, you know, we, we love it. Um, and it, it's something that has not loved us back very often. Uh, and I, I, this season has been so much fun. Uh, and Saturday felt like a, a celebration in a lot of ways. Uh, it was a celebration of, of Lee Corso. Um, and not just, you know, the impact that he's had uh, to the lives of his players who clearly loved him. And still do. Um, But a celebration of the impact that he's had on college football. Um, It it was a celebration of that. It was a celebration of Bloomington. Um, The weather cooperated as it did for Big Moon Saturday. You could not have asked for a better day if you're the Chamber of Commerce in Bloomington going, you know what, we're going to put a three-hour PSA on on how awesome Bloomington is. That was the perfect day. Yeah, it was a celebration of Bloomington. It was a celebration of uh, of Kurt Signetti and, and the job that him and his staff have done, a celebration of the players, um, and just a, a celebration of the start that Indiana has had. And you have all that happen, and then you have to go play a game. Now, yep. for the players, all that celebration stuff, you know, I – who knows how much they paid attention to it. I'm sure that they, you know, noticed (laughs) impossible not to, as you enter the stadium to a sea of red, it's packed, it's loud and people are waving those cool white towels. It, It was, it looked unbelievable. So I'm sure they noticed, but you know, the game starts in between the lines and then it can't be a celebration anymore. Now it's got to be, we got to keep taking care of business and we got a backup quarterback and we need to figure out how to win a game Uh, against a a talented team. You know, it's certainly not the Washington from last year. Um, Anybody, you know, they finished second in the country last year. Well, okay. They're as different of a team this year as IU is versus what the Hoosiers were last year. So that part set aside, but it's still a, a team with a lot of talent and it's still a conference game. Um, and Indiana had to go out, set aside any emotions and just take care of business. 
And, you know, there's certainly that old Indiana football fan in you that says, all of this is awesome. What if we lose? You know, didn't happen. Uh, yep. it, but, you know, I, you're right. It's just a ton of emotions that, that come into play with it. Uh, the overriding one was just the joy and happiness um, that we've waited a long time for, for something that we didn't know would ever happen. Um, and it, it is, and it's really, really fun to watch. Um, I, just a, a perfect day and really happy for, for everybody involved with Indiana football that, uh, that they got to experience that you get yourself to eight. No, now you got to hit the road. Yeah. And final thought on game day celebration is perfect, but for me, it's not a culmination of anything. This is right. what, right. this is what football Saturdays could be. Now it's that like game day is not coming to Bloomington every week, but there's no reason why you can't sell out the stadium. And look, the, the weather is not going to be like that every Saturday either. If it is, you know, you, you're tremendously lucky, um, yeah. but this is what football Saturdays in Bloomington can be and it can be every week. Um, so, I, you know, it, it was awesome to see, and I think it's it's not the last stop on the ride. It just shows you how good the ride can be. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. now, the, you know, you, you go in, you beat Washington with the backup quarterback. You really didn't ask to do too much. Um, you know, Washington has some – Jonah Coleman's going to be in the NFL. Uh, oh, Denzel yeah. Boston's a good – they had some good players. Their offensive line struggled, and we – identified that in the uh in our preseason you know uh previews where it was they have tremendous skill but if their offensive line does not turn it around they'll be average uh but now yeah you gotta you have a question at quarterback again going up to michigan state who and tj right in the previews of michigan state they are head scratchingly weird statistically um you know everybody thinks that you know, they'll go as Aiden Childs goes, but his splits and wins and losses are very similar. Mm-hmm. You know, he's thrown five interceptions in the wins. He's thrown four interceptions in the losses. Um, completion percentage is, is maybe a tenth of a percentage uh, apart in wins and losses. Uh, but it, it's going to come down to can the Michigan State defense get pressure on Indiana's quarterback, whether it's Curtis Rourke or Taven Jackson, and can they stop the running game and stop Indiana on third downs, which Indiana leads the conference in third down conversions over 54%. But this is, you're going up to Spartan Stadium as a, I mean, it's more than a touchdown favorite. So as a heavy road favorite um, with some expectations, how do you respond to that? Yeah, I think uh, it's up to seven and a half. I think it might have opened at six and a half and it has gone up to seven and a half for Indiana. Um, Aiden Childs, the interceptions, um, you know, it's definitely started out as an issue. I think it's fair to credit him for taking better care of the ball recently. Um, yeah, only only to, one interception in October. Yes, it's not to say that oh, that can't be an issue for him moving forward because it might be. I mean, Indiana's secondary played very well against Washington, um, particularly D'Angelo Pons, obviously, Big Ten uh, Defensive Player of the Week for for his performance um, against a group of receivers that is better than what Michigan State has. Um, So it's not to say that Indiana can't make interceptions a problem in this game for Aiden Childs, but he has done a better job of taking care of the ball uh, where I think that Michigan state is susceptible. uh, And there's a couple different areas you could pick for this, but I don't think that their, uh, their running game has been near as good as you, you would think that it would be given Aiden Childs mobility um and the the two running backs that they have i think it's fair to say that on the other side as well teams have been able to find some success running the ball against them um as well it's not they don't have any huge glaring weaknesses that you look at statistically but it might be fair to say they don't have any major strengths either 
Uh, the one outlier that really stands out on their resume or their their body of work is that Iowa game. Um, yeah. That that they were able to beat the Hawkeyes convincingly, um, and it that was one that was at home uh, in East Lansing, and they were able to put up forty points on on Iowa. Um, it's a lot so of field goals from Jonathan Kim. It was absolutely, yeah. So that that's one that you look at and you say, well, if that Michigan State plays. And Indiana's passing game is still, you know, out of rhythm. Then you get concerned. Yeah, this is the first team I, I might even say all year that IU has played that they're comfortable kicking field goals um, outside of the non-conference game. So you're not going to have a game where Nebraska is scared to kick field goals in the red zone. Michigan State will take their points probably, and you know, add it up where. You know, Washington was a little nervous kicking long field goals, too. Um, and those – you don't win games by kicking field goals outside of that Iowa game, but you could stay in the game a little bit longer and force Indiana, if they're playing with the backup quarterback and Taven Jackson, force them to maybe make a mistake. Be a little bit more aggressive in the third and fourth quarter and make those mistakes that, that keep you in the game. But, yeah, this is the first game – um, you, you go in going, okay, they, they – in the red zone, they're going to probably kick a field goal if they get the opportunity to. Yeah, Washington, to to kind of illustrate that point, uh, they had – you know, scoring drives are kind of categorized as drives inside of an opponent's 40-yard line. You get inside of that 40-yard line, you're thinking points, right? And Washington – only got 2.3, 2.43 points uh, per scoring drive, which is bad. That That's bad. That's a major reason Indiana won that game and did so relatively comfortably, right? Um, if, if you get that number up to four or five points per scoring drive, uh, you feel better about it. And obviously, if you're at seven points per scoring drive, then you've done perfect. Um, and Indiana has been closer to that six, seven point number in the games that they've played really well. Uh, didn't happen with that goal line stand that Washington had um, that forced Indiana that field goal at the end of the half. But overall, Indiana's executed really well in the red zone and they've prevented other teams from finishing scoring drives with some timely stops. Um, Michigan state, the one, one part of their game that I do think Indiana can exploit is the offensive line, giving up pressures to Aiden Childs. Uh, Michigan state is in the bottom, bottom third of the country, uh, 108th nationally in sack percentage allowed. So on dropbacks, they're giving up a sack on over 8.3% of dropbacks. Uh, for context on that, Indiana is sacking uh, percentage on defense is 32nd in the country. So that that's a mismatch for Indiana as they do a good job creating pressures, not necessarily beating opposing offensive lines, just lining up and beating them one-on-one, -on -one, although that has happened some with Mikel Kamara. Uh, particularly, but Indiana does do a good job of scheming pressures with Bryant Haynes, figuring out ways to get guys into the backfield. Um, and Michigan State has given that up some. And that's, I think, one of the reasons Aiden Childs was loose with the ball early. He did not handle those pressures well. Uh, he's done a better job of that recently, but they are still giving up sacks. Michigan last week, uh, I believe had three, and I think they had seven tackles for loss uh, against the Spartans. Um, but, you know, it's that really is the one part of their statistical profile that you look at and say that's a major edge for Indiana is getting pressure on Aiden Childs with their defensive front. Yeah, and, and they've done that well the last – I mean, they've done it well all season. 
Yeah. Um, you know, you, you saw it last week. I think the first play of the game was a sack, and you saw it was Sean Asbury in on in, in on it. I don't know if yep. he got credited for it, but he, he he's he's in there. You saw t- uh, Tony uh, Terry Jones, Terry Jones, um, Terry Jones Another in there game. against the, against Nebraska. You've seen D'Angelo Pons get some t- uh, tackles for loss. Um, and he's, I mean, he's getting all types of national defensive player of the week awards too, for his performance against Washington. Um, you know, I think a, another thing that, that we need to talk about is Michigan state secondary. They're going to be without their best defensive player statistically in Jordan Tucker, who got ejected for a second half targeting against Michigan. Um, it, it's his second targeting penalty of the year. Um, at least, at least the ones I've seen. But he, he leads them in tackles, leads them in tackles for loss. I think it's tied for second, um, tied for second in in sacks as well. So in, in a game where you know Indiana starts fast or it's gotten off to fast starts and, and Michigan State wants to keep up with them, losing your best defender for the first half is not optimal. Yeah, it's Jordan Turner is tied for the lead on the team in sacks. Uh it's him and Chris Bogle both have three. Uh, but you're right, leads the team in tackles, leads the team in tackles for a loss. I don't – I should have looked this up. I don't know if he's their green dot player or not. Do you know? I'm not sure. I don't think so. That might be probably Cal not. Halliday. Yeah, probably is, yeah. yeah he's yeah, a but, ten, you know, 14th year senior. He's been I there know. since 2000. Yeah. But – um. I, I think that, that that's something that should, in theory, open up the middle of the field a little bit for Indiana uh, in the passing game. And I guess now is a, a good time, as we mentioned the passing game, uh, what do you think happens at the quarterback position and how does it change how you feel about this game depending on Curtis Rourke? Versus Taven Jackson, and if it's Rourke, how do you think he is able to play? Uh, obviously, this is a lot of conjecture on our part, not asking for any hard predictions because we don't know. Uh, Indiana does not know, in my opinion, whether or not Curtis Rourke is going to be able to go on Saturday. I think a lot's going to depend on what he can do in practice uh, and maybe even how he warms up. Yeah, it's it's trending towards a game time decision, uh, based on uh, what you know Pete Thamel has put out, based on what Kirk Signetti said, in, in that he needs to continue to, you know, he he's throwing and his workload is going to continue to increase. You know, it, it's something you don't worry about his fitness because he's only missed a week or two. It's not like he's coming off a three or four yeah. week injury. And you're like, well, he needs to get in football shape again. He should still be in football shape. It's whether or not he could grip the ball, and, and and that's the big question. And I don't know if it's if it's going to be like if people remember the the Mighty Ducks scene in in, in Mighty Ducks two, where Adam Banks comes in, does that with his wrist, and and is like, oh, overnight it, it got better. That you know, some Disney magic. But My is coach. it one of those things where? You know, maybe on Wednesday, and you look at it, it goes, okay, it's swollen, and it's not feeling great. But on Thursday, all of a sudden, bam, whatever treatment is clicking, and the swelling, the swelling goes down. But yeah, it's if I'm if I'm David Jackson, that you got to be at the ready. One hit on that thumb could, you know, mean that you're you're back in the game and and things like that. Or, uh. He, you know, catching the ball with a snap could be a concern too for for Curtis Rourke. Uh, but yeah, it, it to me it's going to be a game time decision. Like you said, it it may even come down to how you're warming up. We've seen it in the past with with IU quarterbacks coming back from injury, where you kind of know through warm ups. All right, he's not playing, but this might be a thing where where he's going through warm ups and testing it, and you know if it's good to go, I think they give him a try. But that. Yeah. But that leash, especially now with with the stakes raised with the playoff and all that stuff, um, you know, if, if Taven gives you the best chance to win, you're you're going to put he's Kirk Sinetti is going to put him in. Uh, but yeah, I thought you know going to Taven's performance against Washington, he made some really good throws. 
Uh, the, the throw to Omar Cooper that sprung him for a 42 yard touchdown, the third down throw to miles price yep. um, in, in the second half, uh, you know, he overthrows a wide open Eliza Surratt. Some of that is probably a little bit of jitters and, and things like that. And you hope, Hey, second game, you, you're a little bit more, not saying he didn't prepare, but you're a little bit more settled in to, you know, a little bit more comfortable um, in, in that role and, and coming out. But again, you're going on a road, Spartan Stadium's a tough place to play. And, uh, you know, we'll see. And maybe I, I thought that they, they took the ball out of his hands in the second half after that interception and said, well, you know what? We could run the ball down these guys' throats. Yeah. They had, you know, that, that field goal drive before the half was 19 plays. And that three points was huge, ended up being huge after the interception to start the third quarter. But after that, you had a seven and a half minute drive for a touchdown. And then the final drive of the game you know, you bled off the final six minutes of the game, just handing the ball off and doing quarterback runs and all of that stuff. So I, I'm going to say it's a, it's a game time decision until more information comes out, if more information comes out. But it's one of those right. things that will probably be listed as questionable on the, the injury report on Saturday. And, you know, you're, you're going to see who comes out and takes snaps with Mike Kadick. Yeah, it's interesting. You obviously we're <laughs> soaking up as much, you know, national content as we can as they talk about Indiana. Uh, it's not something that happens very often. So listening and, and consuming as much as you can, um, one, to hear what other people are saying about the program, and two, uh, you know, paying attention to, uh, the rest of the country as it impacts Indiana's standing within rankings and standing within potential playoff positioning. Um, but listening to those national kind of podcasts and national writers uh, and columns, I think by and large, people were more impressed by what Indiana did against Washington than they were anything else IU has done all season. Um which yeah, cause... I don't I don't necessarily agree with, but I do understand because Indiana won in a different way. Yep. It was not a pretty, you know, offensive fireworks with Curtis Rourke, you know, lighting up opponents and rushing for short, you know, touchdowns to finish drives. It was, hey, there's some actual game pressure here. Um as as Washington cut the lead to 17 to 14. And Indiana responds with a wonderful drive that worked its way down the field. Wasn't any big explosive plays, just worked its way down the field and ran it right down Washington's throat for the rest of the game. Um, Now, what I think will be interesting to see going forward is we heard about, oh, Michigan State changed their defensive looks moving their safeties around, switching from zone to man, um, doing a lot of things differently that we didn't expect, didn't prepare for. So we threw out our game script wisely. It worked. Threw out our game script and just said, okay, you're giving us this, giving us these runs. We're just going to do that for four or five yards to carry and just grind this win out. Because yeah, that's and, and... how we get to eight. No, is it that? And then on Saturday we see a return to what we expect from IU's offense, and they allow Taven Jackson, uh, you know, to throw the ball thirty times instead of nineteen. Is it that, or is it? Yeah, we that was accurate. You know, we weren't lying. That's Washington did do that. But there were some shaky things we saw some tape from Taven that we're not comfortable with giving him that workload. We're going to try and run it again on Michigan State and win that way until Curtis comes back. I'll be well, interested to see how that game script plays out. Yeah, the the good news is is that Michigan State's not coming off a of bye, which like every other IU opponent has this season. So right. um, you know, Washington did change their entire defense. They played more zone and and 
you know, kind of tried to bait Taven into throwing, but how much of that was, hey, we have an extra week to prepare for this and come up with a scheme. Sure. Now Michigan State coming off a semi-short week in that you, you played a late night Saturday game um, and, and have a regular week to, to prepare for IU, how much change and you're missing your best defensive back. You're missing your best safety for the first half. How much change are you going to make to to that defense? Um, I I don't. You're right. If it's if they stay true to what the the coaches see on tape, I I think they do ask a little bit more of Taven because you're going on the road and you probably need to score more than 31 points to to win comfortably. Um, and and he he's got a lot of talent. He could throw the ball. But can he make the right decisions quick enough? Um, and there, there were a lot of decisions where it just wasn't quick enough uh, against Washington. And most some of that might have been, hey, we, we hadn't seen this look. We didn't prepare for this look right. um, and, and all of that stuff. But there there are throws that he wants back. I'm sure that once a Surratt he wants back um, and, and things like that. But, man, he – you know, he, he – commanded the offense down the field in the second half in some big spots. He scored a big touchdown on the run by pulling. I think that quarterback run game is there. Yeah. And that's that, going to be that a was an improvement because in the first half on that drive, he had an option to pull the ball, chose to hand it off. Uh, if he pulls that, he walks in for a touchdown in yep. the first half. It was the wrong read. Yeah. The second then, half. I mean, that happens. We've seen it finishes. happen before all oh, the sure. time. Sure. And second half, he makes the absolute correct read, keeps mm-hmm. it, and scores. So, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's growth is not linear, but that was growth right there. That was, yeah. okay, I've seen this before. I'm going to make the right play this time. He will make the wrong read again at some point. That happens. Growth not linear. Uh, but it was good to see, right? It was good to see. I saw this. We maybe looked at it at halftime. You know, on the on the iPad, uh, iPads, the Surface, whatever. We saw it on the tablet. I said the same look in the second half, and I make the right read this time for a touchdown. That's that's yeah. good growth. So uh, yeah, that's all you could ask for. I mean, that's yeah. all you could ask for in a quarter in a quarterback making his first start of the year, uh, who's sure. been the backup. Is hey, this is what they gave us. Here's the adjustment we make, and he and he made it and. You know that was that was the touchdown. That was the dagger. Uh, the, you know the, yes. after the the punt return, and you just absolutely put Washington to bed after that. But let's get on with Michigan State. TJ, what is your matchup to watch? Yeah, I'm going to go with Indiana's uh, defensive front against Michigan State's offensive line and Aiden Childs. Uh, touched on it earlier, so I won't repeat myself too much. But Michigan State does struggle uh, at times in pass protection. Um, Aiden Childs sacked on over 8.3% of his dropbacks and Indiana does a good job getting pressure on the quarterback. So I'm looking at that as a matchup to watch. Number one, it could force Aiden Childs into some mistakes that IU secondary can capitalize on, uh, for turnovers or number two, you know, you get a sack and your likelihood of of that being an empty drive for Michigan State's offense goes up exponentially. Uh, So it's it's a chance to to wreck drives or create turnovers. And I think it's something I use defense will be able to do against this offensive line. Yeah, um, that's I I, kind of want to take the inverse of that because the, the splits are, hey, if Michigan State's winning, they have 30 tackles for loss, 16 sacks when they're losing, it's half of that in each category but i do want to highlight two young dynamic players in this matchup nick marsh the wide receiver from michigan state who's having an outstanding year and then d'angelo ponds who you'd expect to be on nick marsh um night it's it's a freshman versus sophomore matchup and you saw ponds basically take denzel boston out of the game for for washington last week and i think if you take michigan state's top target away you know, Antonio Gates Jr. left the program. We'll see if Elante Brown is healthy. Um, they, they've taken a lot of hits in their wide receiver core that this IU secondary um, 
can take advantage of. But D'Angelo Pond is on fire right now. Nick Marsh is having a really good year for Michigan State, and that's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Yeah. Yeah, Michigan State's wide receiver core on the whole, uh, not as talented as what IU saw against, say, Maryland uh, or against Washington. Uh, but it it's a, a pretty good group, and you're right, Marsh, definitely the bunch or the best of the bunch for them, uh, averaging over 16 yards per catch. Um, uh, and their, their go-to target for Childs, uh, running game, since we haven't mentioned their two running backs, we'll do that briefly, uh, just as an aside, K. Ron Lynch Adams, uh, transfer, um, to them from UMass and Nate Carter, uh, they'll split carries, uh, between the two of them. Nate Carter was, was kind of the go-to guy against Michigan, but by and large, they do split carries and they're pretty interchangeable they're both right there uh just below five yards a carry um and then Aiden Child's capable of running the ball he's not going to look to scramble necessarily uh, but if the play breaks down you know he can get outside the pocket and hurt you so uh neither of of them are as good as Jonah Coleman um I'm confident saying that uh but you know two very capable running backs that that can hurt Indiana if they get into a rhythm. So uh, the running game, something to watch out for as well. It's a, honestly, it's a very, fairly balanced offense. I think Jonathan Smith would prefer to have his teams be a little bit more physical in the running game than what Michigan state has been able to be so far this year, based on his work at Oregon state. I think that that's what he would like to have. Um, Hopefully they don't get into that rhythm and find themselves there against Indiana. Um, Indiana's defense has given us no reason to worry about that necessarily. But uh, as we get into predictions, I'll go first. I am not going to pick against Indiana until they give me a reason to do so. Um, I, I, I'm going under the assumption that Taven Jackson is going to start. I think it's an extremely 50-50 proposition right now uh, whether or not that's going to be the case. But I'll I'll go with Taven Jackson getting the start and Indiana winning this game. Uh, I'm going to go with Mika Radicic getting to kick another field goal. Good for him. Uh, Indiana, 34 as Radicic gets mm-hmm. two field goals. So he might have to ice his leg afterwards. Uh kicking that much more heavy workload than he's used to, but two field goals, 34 to 20 in favor of Indiana, a 14 point win on the road. We'd all take that if offered. Yeah, I I, I'm absolutely take that. Um, I'm going to also fall under the assumption that it's it's the safe thing. Yeah. The assumption that Taven Jackson is going to play, and then um, Curtis is back for Michigan is is what I am ready yeah. to accept. Yep, and, and prediction wise, it's just you know easier just to do Taven um, and, and all that stuff. I, I'm going to take Indiana 27, Michigan State 17. Uh, I think it's a comfortable win for IU, but I don't know Michigan State's going to want to shorten the game, limit possessions. Um, and then you, you will see how how good Taven can play. But it, the offense was not as efficient as it has been in the past. You're going up on the road. Um, but, you know, I think it's it's still a 10-point comfortable win. You get three touchdowns, maybe a couple field goals uh, and things like that. But I'm, I'm going to take Indiana 27, Michigan State 17. Yep. Yep, I think that's, you know, at at this point, style points and how you get it done does not matter. We know what this Indiana team is. Um, it matters about... to the national perspective. It does not matter to us and the people who have actually watched this team. Right. But for that writer in San Diego who put Indiana at 18th, yeah. um, they it, it's it matters and that's and and I know the AP vote doesn't really matter and we'll find out where IU exactly stands 
on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, so if you don't want to deal with election coverage, you do have college football playoff coverage in the first poll coming out there. Um, Get mad on about Tuesday, that instead. On, on Tuesday. So you'll see, I think style points matter, but when you're looking at a whole bottle, body of work, a 10-point win up at Michigan State with your backup quarterback is enough style points to, to get you some points. Because I think that's the reason why they stayed at 13 was the, the – you don't know what's going on with Curtis Rourke. Taven Jackson didn't look like he lit the world on fire. You played at home in front of a raucous crowd against a team who's traveling three time zones there. They wanted to see more from Taven. But um, we'll, we'll see. Maybe Curtis Rourke plays, maybe he doesn't, and that, that will certainly uh, – change things on the field so anyway yeah. thanks tj for for joining us as always uh, you can come to hoosierhuddle.com we have all the pregame lead up player interviews all that stuff also this week we did talk to marty smith of marty mcgee of espn and sec network he called indiana the best story in college football in a year where there are a lot of great stories uh and he does have a cool nil um you know, a tool uh, for for college football fans to, to use and, and raise money for the schools that they root for. So be sure to ch- tune into that if you haven't. Uh, they'll both come out later today. And then follow us on Twitter at Hoosier underscore Huddle. We do have a TikTok now. And again, as I said on After the Dust, I do not know how to use TikTok. So if you just see a TikTok of my face, please uh, laugh at it and uh, send me instructions on how to use this app. So uh, anyway, thanks for joining us, TJ. And uh, thank you guys for listening.